everybody, it's Leah at Flight Drop Store, and over here is Matt. Hey guys. Yeah, he's going to talk to you guys about and girls about dormancy. This is the time of year for it, and so he's going to just give you some basics and whatever else comes to mind. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So here we are. It's early November here in Southern Oregon, and we had an unusually warm and long fall. So it didn't really feel like dormancy was on us yet. Uh, so we're a little late rolling this out, but I um, thought I'd show you guys a few of the fly traps and what they look like now. They're mostly dormant. Still, some of them have some summer traps, and you can see a lot of them are shedding their traps. If you take a look, so Fuse Tooth is one of those that does a really good job hunkering down. You can see down there in the center of the rhizome the healthy growth that's still happening, but it's really low and small, so it's hunkered down pretty good. Some of these older traps here are black now. Um, if they come off with a gentle tug, we'll remove them. But if they're, uh, you know, still attached, we just let them do their thing and eventually they'll drop them on their own. Um, so yeah, fuse tooth. This is a nice one here. This is Whip Snapper, original world insectivores plants by Bob Hanrahan, one of the first mail order uh, um, carnivorous plant nurseries ever. Um, and this is a classic plant here. It looks like it's still got some nice summer traps, caught a few flies this summer. And uh, now it's starting to lose some of those, the blackening you can see. But again, again, you see down there in the center, nice healthy growth, just really low and small growing traps. So, so, so question people will have those taller traps. Are they gonna die off eventually? Yeah, they'll all die off eventually. I mean, you can see they look real healthy, some of them still, Yeah. but this big trap will probably last another month or two at most. It'll be gone by spring, almost certainly. And so you'll be left with that little rosette, which uh, sort of belies the true size of it. Yes. And so in the spring, you'll be able to see when the traps grow back, how big it really is. Yeah, it's hard to tell how big the plants are, especially when they're dormant, because almost everything goes underground. They hunker down and store a lot in the bulb, and they don't really have much in the way of leaves, so it's... They look tiny, but the reality is these are very, very large plants underneath the soil here. Yep. And you can see some of them are a little more conservative than others. Some don't lose their leaves quite as much. So, for example, this is a nice healthy pot of Kronos. And uh, it does one of the best jobs of retaining huge traps through all year long, really. Um, traps stay pretty big. Even in dormancy, it won't grow a whole lot of new ones, but... They'll, they're larger than average, and they're pretty big and healthy-looking plants pretty much all year. Um, so another example, this is our DCXL. Again, these are really huge plants, but you wouldn't know it right now. Uh, DCXL is one that does most of its big growth in the spring, and then hunkers down pretty early uh, in early fall. So it's lost almost all of its big traps at this point. There might be one up here that it put out, but... Most of the traps are pretty small at this point for a DCXL. They're still larger than the average fly trap. But. So I have a question for you. How can you tell that that's not a sick fly trap? Well, again, it's about the growth coming from the middle. You can see there's all every rhizome has little new traps coming out. That means it's not sickly. So whenever a plant has a problem, typically the way to tell is the new growth is either non-existent or it looks damaged or deformed in some way. So these guys, there's nothing to worry about. They don't look great, but obviously it's the time of year. They're just going dormant, putting out new growth, but it's all little and low lying. So. And why do fly traps go dormant? Well, it's a natural seasonal thing. Um, all plants, just like the grass in your yard or the trees in your yard they shed their leaves in the fall the grass basically stops growing this time of year these fly traps are just like that they're temperate plants they're native to north and south carolina so they just hunker down when it gets colder and the days are short and there's no insects so they don't have anything to catch and there's not enough sun to photosynthesize to grow fast so they hunker down and wait for better conditions so i noticed that these red ones seem to be much smaller do they go quote more dormant than the green ones or is it about the same uh again it kind of depends on the variety so these little ones here are crimson sawtooth 
and uh, it does go pretty dormant and it also tends to divide a lot so you'll see a lot of little traps around the outside of it and it hunkers down pretty early as well similar to DCXL mm -hmm. and if you look in the back the maroon monster it's well on its way to dormancy too but it's retained a few larger traps just like Kronos does and uh, but it will probably lose almost all those almost all of them will as go. it goes more dormant. well yeah it's lost most of them now but yeah it'll lose more uh, here in November, probably by January, most of these traps, the larger ones you see now, will be gone. What about like someone who has a fly trap in Florida? Is that going to look the same dormant-wise as these here? Uh, I've never grown in Florida, so I don't know for sure. I've seen a lot of photos, and they usually look a little better in the warmer climates. They don't hunker down quite as much. Um, I've noticed that. So yeah, they seem to stay, they retain a little more foliage and don't go quite as dormant. You know, here in Oregon, our winters are long, and they're pretty cool and wet. And uh, fly traps, well, that's something else to talk about, is watering during dormancy. So most of these plants, we try to keep them year-round, really. We keep the soil just moist, but in winter, it's particularly important because they're more susceptible to rot. So cold and wet conditions, just like it does with humans, can make them sick. You know, there's bacteria and mold that's more prone to grow when it's cooler and damper. So it's important to keep them just damp and not soaking wet. And you'll notice none of these are sitting in water. Um, I usually just top water them. Um, I don't know about this about once a week this time of year, maybe. And uh, yeah. So what makes a fly trap go dormant? Like what triggers it to say, oh, time to hunker down? Uh, primarily the changing in the photo period. Um, even if it's cold, you know, we in the spring here we'll get some cold weather. After the days start getting longer, it'll be in the 50s at best, uh, even into April and, and May and June. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so they typically wait for shorter days in the fall and then uh, start start shrinking and uh, re reabsorbing as much as they can from those big leaves into their rhizome to hunker down for winter. Um, even if the days get really warm, like I said, it's been abnormally warm here this greenhouse has been in the 90s pretty much every day for the last two weeks and they're still going dormant it's primarily driven by the shorter days so they know that as the photo period gets shorter it's time to go to sleep and protect themselves in case there is cold coming which usually does in their habitat in north and south carolina so um, is it also it's also the temperature though right when it gets cooler but that's not as important not as important okay yeah, it's primarily the photo period honestly and okay. um, it's been proven in recent years that Venus flytraps can go, can grow indefinitely without dormancy, but only under certain strict conditions. So if you maintain a constant photo period with warm growing conditions and uh, feed them constantly, they'll basically just continue growing and dividing. So, um, yeah. Well, what about... Um people putting them in the fridge for dormancy. What's that about? So some people in really cold climates that don't have somewhere that they could put the fly traps to be somewhat protected, um, choose to, to wrap them in either sphagnum or just damp paper towels and put an insecticide or a fungicide, sorry, on them and protect them that way in the fridge. And that's a suitable way to do it as long as you let them go dormant before you do that. Um, We'd recommend not doing that if you have any option because they do grow in the winter. And if you put them in the fridge, they basically enter a state of suspended animation and just sit there. Whereas these guys will put out roots and their rhizomes will swell a little bit and they'll photosynthesize with the sun. Um, but in colder climates, especially where you don't have an option, like no indoor growing area with good sun, like a south facing window, you can winter them that way. Um, if you have no option, the fridge is an option. Um, so by colder climates, you mean if it freezes or frosts, that's hard, what you're trying to avoid. Yeah. Because otherwise you would just want to leave them outside as much as you can. Yeah. Hard freeze or frost is not ideal for them. They can stand some freezing and frost, but um, repeatedly freezing and uh, freezing them in smaller pots usually will kill them. Yeah. Um, they can, I mean, it happens, seems like almost every year where one of the heaters in our greenhouses doesn't. Hey, we're back. The camera went dormant for a moment there. Hardy, har, har. We just wanted to mostly um, finish what Matt was saying about sometimes the heaters go off, unfortunately, in our greenhouses. And go ahead. Yeah, so uh, 
it seems like every year we get a freeze that comes and then the group one of them either either doesn't kick on or on or kicks off early and uh come out to a greenhouse full of frozen fly traps so uh, it's not a huge deal they can recover just fine from that but it's better if they don't freeze uh, so if you can protect them during their dormancy uh, and keep them nice and cozy not too cold but uh, definitely try to avoid frost and freezing if possible okay so i see that you found a pot of wally while the camera went dormant there yeah. You, you like that just, one a lot? Yeah, I just wanted to show yeah. the color. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little... Oh, yes. That's another thing. Here in Oregon, anyway, during dormancy, the colors change, yeah? They get more intense. Yeah, typically in the fall, just like the leaves start changing on the trees, they get some color to them, yellows and oranges and uh, some deep reds on some colors on some trees, like uh, maples. The fly traps do the same thing in a lot of ways. You know, you can look around and see... Uh, low giant back here has got some nice color to it um, jaws and you can see the newer growth on the maroon monsters really deep dark red almost solid red in coloration and these wallies wallies one of those that color up a lot pretty much all year long but you can see the new growth is particularly colorful mm -hmm. so yeah really pretty and then behind you i see that there are saracenia this is a venus flytrap video but does saracenia go dormant too yeah yeah. These guys here are the Leucophila, the white top ones, and that's a Hurricane Creek white. And their uh, Leucophila put up their best pictures in late fall, and they'll retain some of them through winter all the way. Leucophila will, certain uh, certain uh, clones of Leucophila. So, but yeah, you can see the spring pictures are already brown here, mm -hmm. and some of these fall pictures are still beautiful, but they're starting to lose their their lust, uh, yeah, their luminance, I guess and something starting to yellow a little bit. But yeah, by spring, most of those will be brown also. And uh, we'll just cut them back. Cut them back, then they regrow. Yep, regrow. Okay, and one more thing right down here, we got some sundews. Yeah. And let me find them with the camera. They're so cool. So they go dormant too, or no? Depends. Okay. Sun, uh, Drosera is a huge genus, and there are a lot of species of Drosera. So, those are Bonata and Capensis mostly. There are some Rotundifolia over here. The Rotundifolia will go dormant. The Capensis is a subtropical species, so it really doesn't go dormant. And actually, it looks some of produce produces most of its dew in the winter months. It does a really good job staying sticky and shiny. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful one to grow all winter. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Bonata probably doesn't go dormant either. Um, yeah, I haven't grown lot. it that much, so I honestly don't know. But they look pretty dang good right now. So. They sure do. Okay, I think that's all we've got for dormancy. Um, you can write us with questions at sales at flytrapcare.com. We're always happy to hear from you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, all see right, you guys. next time. See you later. Bye.